Hello and welcome to this edition of Tagunya Tip Talk. My name is Dave Weiser and today we're going to be talking about voiding checks within Business Central. Any business from time to time is going to need to void a check for a variety of reasons. Either the vendor didn't get it, uh, it was destroyed. For some reason you're going to need to void the check and so we're going to talk about how to do that today. First place we're going to go is the payment journal and actually write a couple of checks that we can void. So in the payment journal, I've got a couple of checks here for vendor twenty thousand, one for two hundred and twenty dollars, and one for ten dollars. So we're going to go ahead and print those checks now. We'll go ahead and click print and let the system print those checks. Uh, instead of saving to PDF, we're going to go ahead and print those. Now that those checks are printed, we're going to go ahead and post them, just like normal. So those lines have been posted. So now if we take a look at the various entries that were created from that, we're going to go first to the general ledger entry table. And we're going to see there the entries that were made. If we sort on our entry number in descending order, you can see that we have check 222 and check 223. Uh, the 222 was for the $220 and then the $10 entry in there. We can also take a look at those in the bank ledger entry. If we go to the bank ledger entries, we'll also see those transactions. We'll go ahead and sort this by entry number in descending order also, so we can see those transactions. And you can see those uh, at the very top there, check 222 and 223. You can't void checks from within the bank account ledger entries. The place where voiding checks is done is within the check ledger entry. So if we open up the check ledger entry, and go to that screen, you'll see as we uh, sort in descending order once again on the entry number, here's the two checks right at the top. Now we're going to go ahead and void each one of these, but we're going to do it a little bit differently because there's two options in voiding those. In order to void the check, just highlight the one that you want to void, come up and click process and void check. You'll get this little option screen here, which along with the void check date or the void date, it'll give you an option of how you want to void that check. Do you just want to void the check or do you also want to void the check and unapply it? The difference between the two is that when you void the check, it just voids the check and leaves that payment open on the vendor ledger entry, but it does not reopen the underlying invoice. If you unapply and void check, then not only does it void the check, but it also unapplies the payment from the original invoice and reopens that original invoice. And we'll see that here in just a minute. So on check 222, we're going to go ahead and just void that one so we can see how that impacts. We're on 223, then we're going to go ahead and void that, but we're going to void and unapply. So we'll click yes on that. You'll see that they're now showing on an entry status as financially voided. And so the system treats those as voided. Now if we go and look at the vendor ledger entry again and refresh that page, and look at those entry numbers in descending order. You'll see that not only do we have the payments here, but we also have the voids here in the bank ledger entry. If we then go ahead and take a look at the general ledger entry, You'll see that not only do we have the payments here where we have the debits to AP and the credits to cash, but now with the voids, those same entries are being done, but in reverse order so that the financial impact is reported properly. Where we're going to see the greatest impact is in the vendor ledger entry. So if we open up our vendor ledger entry and we're going to go ahead and filter by this vendor. You can see here we've got, here's the two original checks that we made, 222 for $220 and check 223 for $10. Those both have remaining amount zero, but here are the two voids. And here's the difference that you can see. Remember for check 222, we just voided the check only. We didn't unapply it, where for 223, we did unapply the check. So the way this is showing up now is that check 222 is actually showing with a remaining amount here that then can be paid for the vendor. Whereas check 223 is showing as a remaining amount of zero. And if we go back down to the underlying invoice, which is this last line, you'll see that that invoice is now open again. 
And so both of these can be paid. So it just depends on how you do it. If you just need to reissue a check that maybe got damaged, you can just do void and then reissue the check. If you need to get back to the underlying invoice and repay that one, then you can void and unapply. Void and unapply is usually the process that companies go through in order to repay those invoices, but the other option is available to you. So hopefully this will help you understand how to void checks within Business Central and the two options that are available to help you understand how you can process uh, replacement checks or those voids in the future. If you have any questions about this or about any other topic in Business Central, go ahead and give us a call here at Tagunia or contact us at connect at and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Have a nice day.